So welcome to this preview of the Pop Culture Challenge Tier 1 Final. Hi, I'm Jack Lewis. I'm Lewis Jones. I'm Tom. I'm uh, old. I'm Tom Speller. Everybody, if there was one area of your knowledge that was key to getting you to the final, what was it? One particular strength? You know, you can define it mm-hmm. as broadly or as narrowly as, as you'd like to, but um, Lewis, how about you? I mean, it's difficult. I, I found it this season a lot harder to like find that niche i think last season there was much there was many more games where i i was like that's my quad i've got it like week one i had two musketeers i, was, I don't think i've had a single musketeer this competition mm. um but i think i'm ju- i've just been de- very strong generally on film i think that's always helped me i think i've got at least mm. there was one there's a paul thomas anderson quad i got three out of four um that was the last game before the final tier i think uh, I got three out of four on Studio Ghibli, and I've never seen any of those. Um, and st- actually, stuff like the, all the Japanese stuff that's come up, which I know nothing about, and normally I think the people that like it should be on some sort of list. This time, I've I've got all of the answers. I've I've not seen any of them. I've just you know I'm aware enough of that stuff that I've picked it up. Um, and so maybe that stuff that's a little bit esoteric for others, but I think maybe generationally. I know a lot of people that like it and I've osmosed the information that's probably been the, the difference maker. Um, but certainly I think the writing has been a lot more varied and interesting this year. And I think I've, it's been harder to find those niches. Mm. Tom, as, as we've established, you did brilliantly on your own questions and, and also on, on total answers, but were there any areas where you were especially strong? I mean, my I'm, sport is my sort of thing, really. Um, uh, I, only, I got two wrong in the first week. On sport, I don't think I've got one wrong since. Um, helped, admittedly, by having women's football expert Dean Vaz in the same <laughs> in the same day as we <laughs> hoovered that up. Um, I, I re- my fear is that my knowledge in some areas is pretty weak, um, and tier one questions with extra clues flying at you left, right, and centre um, are, are a lot more straightforward. If you're really just remembering something you've seen once. Mm. Um, but sport, I, I, I'm, I'm convinced I'm a reasonable music quizzer, but the stats suggest otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't be right. It wasn't, um, and yeah, um, and yeah, I mean, I'd really just, TV, if it's from the internet, it's, a lot of it is period related. So mm. it's basically stuff from the 90s and 2000s, I'll do okay. And then an 80s maybe, but a lot for me. That's a lot. A lot of it. So, yeah. um, and I think certain. I thought. I think actually last year there was a lot more. Um, not maybe a more less effort to be as inclusive for younger players. Mm. Um, and I think that's been the case, which hasn't been universally popular. <laughs> 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 I know, but um, yeah, I think yeah. I mean, I think uh, the time period helps me. If it was, if we were doing this in ten years' time, I would be less successful i think it'd be very interesting to see how the statistics played out i mean i think for me definitely sports i think um my musketeers have definitely mm. been in sports and particularly um older sports as well so I'm, I'm sort of in the age where i'm kind of in between lewis and jack but um possibly not as not as aged as as, as you two tom and gareth um so, so, so there's quite a lot i seem to be able to pick up because i can because i can do okay on the more recent stuff but i can also pick up older stuff if it's um not suiting the rest of the people i think the other things are quite like with music as well so pop music i've always thought mm. yeah i can back myself to get them um that said, I mean, I think, the, like Tom, I think there's a few areas where, you know, if they come up, it's just, I know I'm not going to get any of them. And therefore, I think mm. the objective at that point is, well, don't don't swing at this um, if it's not your mm. question and mm. have a go if it's your own question and uh, see what happens, really. I think coming into the tournament, I thought that sort of video games would be something I lean on a lot. Um, it's something that I think I'm quite good on. And it's, it's something that in other competitions I've sort of relied on to sort of get that edge and to win points on. Um, but I think it's been really well balanced this season. And while I have got, you know, some of the video game questions, I've not really relied on them as much to sort of win or to get two or three more points than I usually would. You put your finger on one of the things that's been quite contentious at times, which is video games, because yeah. they, they are perhaps even more so than sort of music uh, and TV, something that is, you know, 
quite rooted to a particular time in in most cases you know you know games are big for a year or two and then they move on and so unless the quad is about a series of games um if it's kind of narrow in a time period then it really benefits some people rather than others and i think you're right i think you know there there was there was stuff from the 70s and the 80s and right up to the modern day but then you know the difficulty varied as well so it did kind of negate the specialist to a degree mm. um i don't know if there were any other quads that felt like between the last pcc and this one that there'd been some kind of adjustment um music maybe i think mm. um I think the balance has been better the the, the rotating third mm. category system i think has been really good um and that's helped the quads feel a little bit more balanced um, with, mm. when it comes to music, sport and uh, film, I think. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I definitely would agree that the video game quad has been the, as the standout chain, especially because now it's, it's a guaranteed quad each week rather than like sharing mm. space with other forms mm. of games. Mm. I think it's um, been really, really well done. Like con- considering a you know difficulty spread and timeline spread, you know, mm. the, the, I mean, some would say the Jet Set Willy quad this week was not actually about video games, but um, the fact that that you know was clearly pitched at a very low level, but was something mm. older, and then say the Lucas Arts games from like week two or three were older, but much much mm. harder. I think that's there's been real care and attention to it. I think because it was a controversial thing i remember mm. reading when they announced a few months ago that it was going to be a permanent space every week there was a few people who said well i'm not playing <laughs> um which is mad it's one it's one question out of 15 and obviously it'll be level one sometimes mm. but um the the fact that they have made the effort i think is really really shown i think people have appreciated mm. it which which leads me on to just um quads standout quads for you that either you particularly liked because you musketeered or you just thought were particularly well constructed tom how about you Tom A or Tom S. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry Tom A. <laughs> the context clues uh, have been useful. The, the yeah, ones yeah, yeah, the first yeah. time we yeah, run this into is the first one in context. <laughs> the ones that really stick in my mind are the ones that, like, uh, the the drill quad, which, well, I mean, that was just noise to me. I know. I didn't even realise <laughs> that. Was just, <laughs> not a clue. Um, and um, um, the... Um, the graffiti artist clip, which I know is like incredibly well known, but I just don't know, knew none of the, didn't know any of the nouns at all. So it, it was just a complete mystery to me. And it, it not, and that, that sticks in, in your head because it's made as well. If I want to do all right at this, I might want to find out some things about this <laughs> sort of thing. That might be, that might be worthwhile doing. Um, my favorite quads, um, I really, um, I really enjoyed the wonderful Weather Spoons app. Uh, quad <laughs> just I, I enjoy a levity of touch in the question and I think that has that that had them very much I've only musketeered one which is bizarrely on Paul Thomas Anderson films about okay. which I really am not an expert <laughs> <laughs> um, but they were relatively well known Tom S um, what were your your standout quads um, I think I think in terms of the ones I got I, I really like the Alan Partridge ones because it's um, you know I'm the right demographic for it Quite enjoyed uh, the cricket and um, superstars ones because oh, that, yeah. that was the one where I kind of, I demolished them. I think the ones I've interestingly the ones I've enjoyed are the ones that I've not necessarily got all that many from, but I kind of like in terms of actually they're generally <laughs> interesting topics that I'm thinking that you think actually you know we should have more questions on them. So things like drill music and Marley and music from last week, I think I thought okay that these are quite challenging, but actually they're bringing you know new you know, new genres of music actually into the quizzing mainstream. And um, and I think that is definitely something to be encouraged. I mean, I mean, going back onto the video games thing, I mean, what you have to remember is that things like video games is now a multi-billion industry. Similarly, um, TV shows on things like Netflix and Apple TV, they're now increasingly what people watch. So it's, um, so it's, it's a good thing that we're seeing new things come into the mainstream. Mm-hmm. And that means even if you might not necessarily get any of them, it's um, that they, they make matches a lot more interesting mm-hmm. because of it. And you're not going to do well in a competition like this if you're the sort of person who resists um, canon expansion. Because exactly. it's going to hit you in the face no matter what. So, you know, if you're prepared for it, you're going to do better. Jack, um, finally on to you, your your memorable quads. And there are a lot of quads that I, I didn't necessarily do too well on, but really enjoyed, which I think is a, a 
sign of a, just a really great quiz. Um, you know, it's always good to have questions that you may not necessarily know, but are really sort of interesting topics. I think my favourite quad, if any, um, would probably be um, feminine Ballon d'Or women, the winners from a few weeks ago, because I think it's, it's really refreshing to see a quad that's not just, you know, Steph Horton, Ellen White, yeah, yeah. Williams sort of thing, and really sort of to push the sort of the boundaries, not just with asking about women's football, but sort of without using the what you'd consider the, the regular four answers that you'd expect to pop mm-hmm. up there, I think, really. I think what's refreshing and, I guess, interesting for anybody watching here is, you know, we've got the four best um, pop culture players in this competition. And what they're all saying is, or what you're all saying is, we love it when we don't know stuff because we're learning about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. sometimes people beat themselves up over not knowing things. Well, actually, if the attitude is great, that's another thing that I can know and get right next time, is probably the sort of a- a- attitude that helps you become more successful. I don't know if that rings true, Lewis. That's kind of my thesis. I think I think you're right, Gareth. Definitely, there's there's really something in that, and you know, things that come up again is always you know not even just for making use in future quizzing. It's just, oh yeah, I know that. But it also, it's great when it comes up in future quizzing. Mm. Uh, Example being the uh, MMA quad that we had um, at some point, maybe Mm -hmm. week five or six. And I got mine, which was Dana White, and that was the only one I really had any clue with. Um, But Georges St-Pierre came up. And then the following week in the US Pop Solos competition, that came up as a question. I was like, yeah, I'll get that. I'm happy, I'm happy, you know, happy to answer that. That was really pleasing. Um, but yeah, you know, I love, I love not knowing stuff. And when, they, when the questions are written with, you know, a bit of levity, like Tom said, and a bit of character, um, especially if there's an interesting link in there, it's a, it's a joy, to, joy to hear them and a joy to, to find out those answers. Um, well, uh, so, yeah, so like, the film, like the film called last week, Lewis, which mm-hmm. was ostensibly about the costume design yes perfectly. Well, awesome, but brilliant this person's yeah. won all these things it's like i didn't know that before yes i, I love that i've i voted for that one this week because i yeah. thought it, it had that especially because she won so many awards also it stops it being yeah. whatever the fourth the four the quad version of a jack and jill question is yeah. it's nice that there could be so many options but that, that was a, a perfect example of, of finding an interesting characterful link and yeah. giving you four brilliant questions about it, which then had their own cluing in their own ways. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I thought that was a brilliant one. And um, as for um, just canon expansion in general, I think this this competition is, has really pushed that, and I think there is no better competition for this. I think everything we can ask here can be non-canon and still be worthwhile because it, you know, in pop culture, lowbrow stuff, that the, the canon isn't there as much. It's not going to mm. be about the great works of literature. Um, and I think they've, I think they've done a brilliant job. And I just hope they, they keep pushing that way and don't let the people with their five or six paragraph uh, comments on a Sunday evening stop them from doing that. There was one question that you got right that you absolutely were chuffed to the gills we're getting. What would it be, Tom Speller? Um, Oliver Bonus. Uh, dredged at the last minute and won a game but it was kind of I was thinking I've heard of this I've heard of this because of the um the topical content and then it, and then it just magically appeared and it was like Oliver bonus <laughs> and then bonus to me <laughs> <laughs> the topical content being uh Matt Hancock Matt Hancock yeah Matt exactly story. indeed Jack how about you uh so quarter final there was a question on who had a cover of breads uh, everything I own in 1974 um which was Ken Boo. Um, which came about because in the first series of PCC, I remember there was a quad on 70s number ones, and I'd never heard of, you know, a single one of these songs. So over the past few months, I've been listening. Lewis can tell you. Lewis yeah, he has. Lewis. I've been boring him to death for this. But, um, we, had a, we had a four-hour trip to Liverpool back the other week, and it was just loads of bizarre songs from the loads past. Loads of bizarre <laughs> songs. I've been listening through every number one from the 50s onwards, uh, and I'm through to the 70s now, and sort of it's really paid, uh, like dividends with the quizzing sort of stuff so okay. if that sort of thing comes up in future hopefully i can sort of remember listening to those songs for, for hours and, and getting some of those lewis um probably my favorite one i think there's something really enjoyable when you use a bit more time i like to quick pass i think that's a good tactic i tend to use a lot but i love it when i do use a little bit more time and i use the time and then i come up with an answer and it, it, it didn't matter in the long run or anything but week one uh the studio 
Ghibli uh, quad, I got The Wind Rises, which was the hardest one. And I was just like, I used to, I, I work in a cinema now, but I used to work in a different cinema when I wasn't a student. Uh, and that film was on when I was there. And it, you know, it was maybe on for a week. And I could just see the poster. And I was just, I was just, I basically spent 30 seconds just zoning into an image of this poster. <laughs> and I got it like last second. And I was like, yeah, that, you know, that's, it's, it's great to know when your mind can work mm. and you can, you can store stuff deep down. Tom Adams, finally. Um, Partly due to upbringing, um, my I've always viewed musical theatre with a strong suspicion. <laughs> I'm, I'm very wary of it. Um, and then the, the quad on Hamilton, about which, you know, I mean, I know the bare, the very, very bare minimum about it. Um, and the the question that was um, just from having read about it and not i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't sit i wouldn't sit and watch it i'm sorry Darren, i know you're a big fan <laughs> uh, but it, it, it i am not <laughs> and um it's um and the question about the george the third um which i you know and, and to me the question was name someone in, in hamilton apologies for language who sounds like they might be portrayed as an arsehole that was, <laughs> that was the question that i asked <laughs> and um and, and and it was and it was right and I was like oh, okay that somehow I don't you know I don't really do much work or anything like that um, and just to actually some something that I've actually gone out of my way to read and then have as information that was in my head to summon even though it may, it'd probably be a very easy question but to me that's like oh yeah I might do this a bit more that seems a good <laughs> idea and 